Jackie and for today's tutorial I have this complete Audrey Hepburn inspired look. If you haven't seen my latest tutorial I did four hairstyles that are all very 60s and inspired by Audrey as well so I will have that link down below and make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any of my uploads but today's look is all about Audrey Hepburn's character Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's such an iconic movie and look so I thought I would try to recreate it as best as I can and put my own little twist on it so I hope you like this makeup look I think it would be perfect for prom and then this updo as well as the costume so let's get into it jumping right in I have started with a light base of foundation I love the Stila aqua glow serum foundation and I also did add some concealer underneath my eyes and now I'm going in with a tiny bit of subtle bronzer to add some dimension to the face, but this is not a bronzy look at all. I'm just softly contouring before going in with a deeper contour shade. With a matte ashy brown shadow, I'm sculpting out my cheekbones. I'm taking my time with this, making sure I'm right under the cheekbone, and then I'm dragging it downwards so it's kind of replicating the look of her very high cheekbones. And I'm also contouring my nose to slim down the bridge and shorten it a little bit. This is totally optional. I always say this because you don't have to change the look of your natural face, but for me, I like when my nose looks a little bit thinner. It helps balance out my features a little bit. And lastly, for the nose contour, I'm just adding Max Soft and Gentle on the tip. Her cheeks had a bright pop on the tops of the cheekbones in her more glam scenes. I'm using this MAC blush from their Flamingo Pink collection. So this is limited edition and it's so pigmented you only need a tiny bit, super bright, and I'm just applying it to the cheekbones and blending out. And a step that I never skip is using an eye primer, so this is Urban Decay's eyeshadow primer in Eden. I'm starting with brows. Hers are farther apart than mine and the arch is higher. They're a little bit more square at the front. So I'm playing with my shape a little bit and keeping them full but still natural. I started with the Maybelline Brow Satin Duo. On camera, it turns off looking a little bit greeny. So I added a little bit more of a reddish powder from Ardell. And then I'm going to move on right into shadows. I am starting with Plouffe from MAC. So just a light shadow that has a bit of sheen to it. And I'm applying this all over the lid as well as in the inner corner. Next, take a matte light cream shade like Heaven from Too Faced and apply it to the brow bone to help raise the brow. And then I'm going in with a medium brownish gray tone and I'm applying this on the outer corner and fading it in gently. I'm using a really cheap brush here, but I use it all the time. It's by Coastal Scents and all my Coastal Scents brushes have really held up. So I don't think you need to spend a crazy amount. Some MAC rank blending brushes are amazing, but I tend to go with Coastal Scents a lot of the time and I use Sigma also. So anyways, I am also taking a gray shade and I'm applying this on the outer half of the lid as well as down onto the front portion of the lid, still keeping the center of the lid bright but adding in a little more dimension. In the photo I'm referencing, there was definitely some blue in the makeup. I'm using this navy from MAC. It is so pretty. I used it in my Selena Gomez Hands to Myself video as well. And I'm running this along the lash line as a base for the liner. My eyes aren't as deep set as Audrey's, so I took a little more of the deep navy shade and I sculpted out the outer crease in a rounded shape. So I just placed it a tiny bit above my crease and I just did a tiny bit. You can bring this all the way in, but it'll look more dramatic and more like cut crease. So I wanted to keep it soft like her look. And I also took a blending brush and quickly blended everything together a bit to give a nice worn in look. I love this next step. Take a brown or bronze shadow and line underneath the lash line, starting in the center and then into a soft wing. I like to keep it so that there's a space between the blue and the bronze shadow. It'll really open up the eye. And I love bringing in a warmer shade when I've worked with all neutral and then the deeper navy shade, just because I prefer warm shades on my eyes because the bronze really makes blue eyes pop. So it's up to you. You can use any shadow underneath the lash line, but I decided to go with the bronze. To further open up the eye, use a white or a cream eyeliner. Here I'm using a brightening one by Chella, and I'm just lining the waterline and also making sure it hits right to the outer corner to help emphasize the little space there. You can go in with gel or liquid liner. I'm using liquid to line the upper lash line and create a small flick. 
Depending on how thick you drew the wing, you might have to go back in with the blue shadow and make sure that you can still see it above the liner. And next, just curl your lashes and apply mascara to the top and bottom lashes. So here's the eye look without lashes, and then I'm just going to pop on a pair of fluttery lashes from Quo, and I added some dual glue, let it get tacky, and then I pop it on so the center is touching, and then line up the outer and inner corner, and then I'm just blending the lashes together with a little bit more mascara. Now for lips, Holly Go Lightly wore a corally pink in the car scene anyway, so I'm using Revlon's Pink in the Afternoon. Lots of bloggers have said this is the closest shade they could find to hers, so if you want to feel like Audrey, pick this up. And to me, it looked a little bit more coral in the scene, so you can always add a more of a coral tone to this, but I prefer pink on me, so I really like this look, and I think that the pink and just freshness of it with the shape of the eye really makes this look. So I hope you like it. And then I decided to mattify the lip with a two-ply tissue. I just put it in half and then I applied it to my lips and applied some powder over top to take off the excess product and set it in place. Now for hair, I recently did a quick bun option for this updo, so you can click here if you want to see that version, but otherwise this is my more advanced, awesome updo, and it's really not that hard to do, but there is some extra steps. So first I am sectioning off the front portions of my hair, and then once I have sectioned off the very front pieces, I realized I need more hair in that uh, top section, so I'm just grabbing more hair, and then I am going to section off those uh, front pieces just with the bobby pin, they will be the finishing touches, and then I'm taking that section of hair and I'm going to uh, add some texture tea spray and just add a little bit of teasing so that the hair will stay together when I put in my bun insert. I made a makeshift fake bun with some old extensions and then a hairnet, so you can use a normal bun maker for this, but I think it's easier to use a hair-like substance so you can get fake hair at wig stores and to get that volume because you're really just stuffing your hair with more hair. And they do this a lot in uh, movies and photo shoots. There's a lot of extra hair being put in those people's heads. So anyways, I'm just pinning this down in front of that hair portion and then I'm pulling the hair up and I'm creating a loop and then I am just rolling it over top and pinning it back in place. Then those pieces that fold over, I'm going to just polish off and pin them in place too. I didn't use too many bobby pins because of course, the more bobby pins you use, the more they could potentially show. So I just used about two or three. So if you wanna be a rock star or do something Amy Winehouse-esque, then you can try this front method, but now I'm going to finish it all off with a very loose French twist. I know French twists can be hard on yourself, so I did it loose and it's not the uh, main part of the look, but I'm just brushing my hair to one side and then having pins go upwards all up that section and make sure you cross some of the pins to make sure it stays in place. And then you're going to twist the hair inwards so you're going over top of those bobby pins and then add more bobby pins into the hair so you're crossing over the bobby pins again underneath and once you have this all set in place you have this tail of extra hair. So I went in and I just created a loop and that's the detailing at the back, just a big loop and now I'm going to work at the front section. With the smaller section, just bring it into the twist and then curl the pieces that are left over and tease the front a little bit. We want this to have a slight poof, so I'm slightly twisting, poofing it out, and then taking the extra curl at the end and creating a pin curl for a little extra detail. Now I've just gone in and added some hairspray to the poof, went in and made sure that some of the bobby pins that I could see weren't sticking out anymore, and there is the completed look. Once the poof is all perfected, I hope you guys like it, and then here are all the accessories to match. Finally, for the complete costume, I got this accessory set from I Am An Audrey. It's a Etsy shop, so I got the tiara, the necklace, earrings, gloves, and extended cigarette holder. Cigarettes are bad, but it's all for the costume. And the earrings are clip-ons, so I do have my ears pierced, and I found wearing clip-on earrings really painful. But other than that, it's a great set. And then the shoes I got from modcloth.com. I thought they were very vintage-inspired. And this midi dress is from lulus.com. 
I thought this dress was perfect for the look and if you want to add a little Audrey to your everyday style, this is a really cute spring coat I got from uh, modcloth.com. I thought it was very vintage and had a little modern take on it with the uh, black detailing there and bow. I added some leather gloves as well. These are from uh, Urban Outfitters last year, but, or maybe like three years ago. Wow, time flies. But you can also find a pair of gloves like this from H&M, and that's where I also got the little scarf I added. So I hope you guys like this complete look, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this look, and if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you like old Hollywood icons. I also did a video about a year ago for Bridget Bardot, so I will have that linked in the down bar as well to check out because that one's really cool. I did um, an updo and I have this big bun, but then I also created fake bangs with my own hair, and it turned out really cool. So I hope you guys uh, like those two tutorials if you want to check out that one, and if you have any other icons you'd like me to try to recreate, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Also, um, this is, if you're new to my channel, you won't know what I'm talking about, but if you like how I do my Jackie jams at the end of these, where I'm just like dancing around and singing as I do in the bathroom when I'm doing my hair, uh, I won't be posting them in my videos anymore because I am worried about like copyright, so I decided I'm just going to post those little videos to Twitter, so make sure you're following me there, at Jackie Wires, as well as on my Instagram if you want to see what looks are coming up, and I will see you guys in my next video. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look that weird? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha